Tomorrow's movie is My Six Love, stars Debbie Reynolds, Cliff Robertson, plus, of course, your chance to play this game. It's for $16,000 you got to watch to win tomorrow. I hope you meet me right back here at the $16,000 movie. Have a super night. Tonight in the news, the rumbling trains that are rattling the nerves of a neighborhood. We'll have a live report. Plus, hoping the summer will never end. I'm Nolan Johannes. News Watch 16 is next. Join up in a fight against muscular dystrophy. This is the news station, WNEP 16. Good evening, I'm Nolan Johannes. Karen Hart has the night off. They rumble and roar. The train engines are rattling the nerves of the people who live in a Wilkes-Barre neighborhood tonight. Newswatch 16's Mark Davis is live in that community right now to let us know what the rumbling is all about. Mark? Nolan, the rumbling's all about some trains, and we'll tell you about that in a second. But right now, it's quiet in this Wilkes-Barre neighborhood. We're at the corner of Pickering and Minor Streets in Wilkes-Barre. And quiet is something the neighbors here say they don't get enough of. It's usually pretty noisy in this neighborhood. Why, you might ask? Well, usually there's some trains that are parked up on those tracks right behind me. And the trains on those tracks is knocking this quiet neighborhood a little bit off the track. Listen, hear that? It's a sound of three train engines running. And that's a sound people here are sick of hearing. They tell me the trains are parked on these tracks on a regular basis and left running leaving them with a noise, and that noise is causing a lot of problems. The people in the South Wilkesbury neighborhood have been putting up with the sound of those trains for quite some time now. But concern over the sound of the trains was heightened just a few weeks ago. A little girl got into trouble here in this swimming pool. That little girl was the granddaughter of Mrs. Ruth Dress. And because of the train sounds, Mrs. Dress couldn't hear her granddaughter's cries for help. And she got her shirt tangled around her neck. And I didn't hear her hollering for help. The train was up there. At that time, there were five diesels. And when I just happened to pass the window, I looked out, and there she was struggling in the water. That was the most serious problem with the noise that we could find, but other people are literally losing sleep because of the noise. See, many nights, my husband and I don't sleep because we get the noise right in our bedroom. And we're four houses away. So it is a terrible annoyance, terrible. Another annoyance the neighbors say is that the trains are left without anyone to watch them. But the Delaware and Hudson Railroad tells me the trains are secured and only railroad people would know how to get them moving. The Delaware and Hudson also tells me tonight that it recognizes that the trains that are parked here is a problem. They say they don't want the trains sitting here either because that means that the trains aren't moving and that's costing the railroad money. But they say they can't move them a lot of times during the day because of some major repair work that's being done on some tracks in the area. They say that work should be done in about a week so the trains will be moving through here and not stopping here. Mark Davis, News 116, live with the Instacam in South Wilkesbury. Nolan? Mark, how about some laws? Isn't there any law against that kind of noise? That's a question we wanted an answer to, and I spent the afternoon in the city attorney's office at Wilkesbury City Hall looking through the books. Now, there are a number of general nuisance and general noise ordinances in Wilkesbury, but nothing that would cover a situation specifically like this one. Okay, Mark, thank you. Residents in Plymouth Township who were concerned about a garbage fire can breathe easier tonight. Firemen tell us they've been able to put out the blaze in the Curry Hill section of the township. Residents were worried that that fire might spread to underground coal veins, but firemen say they pumped enough water onto the site to stop the fire, and they'll keep an eye on the Plymouth Township dump for several days to make sure that it doesn't start up again. Still ahead, why the telephone strike may mess up our phone bills. Plus, Mike Eichel will be here with an update on his disposable diaper investigation. He'll pin that story down when we come back. News Watch 16 is everywhere. The makers of an infant's disposable diaper has responded to a mother's concern. Action 16 was the first to tell you about the diapers coming apart in a baby's hands. Mike Igo is here now to tell us the latest. Mike? Don, it's been two weeks since I first told you about these Revco disposable diapers that may be unsafe. But today I saw the first visible signs that the company may be taking some action. When I revisited Linda Stetz, the Wilkesbury mother who called the problem to Action 16's attention, she showed me a copy of a letter Revco sent to the manufacturer and apparently believes made the diapers. The letter asked the Canadian company to get in touch with Linda. Well, guess what? While we were there, the manufacturer just happened to call. And you know, when Linda was there, she uh, had a few things that were made request of her. They asked her to send along a few samples of the questionable diapers so it can begin its own investigation. 
Now, of course, I also spoke to an official, and believe it or not, he didn't seem to know too much about the case. In fact, he began asking me a lot of questions. And remember, this comes a full two weeks after Revco first promised it would investigate. I assume you're going to stay on top of this one, well, of right, Of course, Mike? you know me better than that. I'm not going to give up now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Nolan. The gentleman at the uh, company up in Canada told me as soon as he gets the samples from Linda, he's going to get right back to me. Okay, I just can't understand why he needs her samples, why he can't take some of his own. But I guess he just wants to make sure that they're the, yeah. the wrong ones or the right ones. Okay, thanks, Mike. Something else for consumers to look out for tonight. It seems the strike by telephone workers and problems with the phone company's computers are messing up some of the bills being sent out by Bell of Pennsylvania. My, my Bell says that you may get a notice saying you owe for last month's bill, even if you have already paid for, for it. The phone company says a shortage of manpower is causing a backup of bills, and it hasn't been able to catch up with all the payments that are coming in. They're still doing it in Scranton. The problem we told you about last week is still a problem on the Green Ridge Street Bridge. During construction from now till next June, only northbound Route 307 and 11 traffic is allowed. But southbound drivers are still trying to sneak across rather than take detours. Scranton police say they'll keep their eyes on that bridge. It'll cost you a $35 ticket if you're caught going the wrong way on the Green Ridge Street Bridge. Next, meteorologist Tom Clark will have the latest on where that hurricane is heading. Plus, a little later, getting ready to head back to class. We'll take a look at the kids and the clothes as News Walk 16 continues. Save all your aluminum cans and bring them to the telephone on Labor Day. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Alicia, Alicia, where are you now? Mm. Tom is going to tell us. How about it, Tom? Okay, Nolan, uh, uh, Alicia is becoming a very dangerous hurricane now down in the western Gulf of Mexico. Let me show you a satellite picture taken just a few short hours ago. And the storm center now is only about 75 miles southeast of Galveston, Texas. Now, the coast of Texas is up there in the left corner of your screen, and the center of the storm is moving towards the west-northwest at only about five miles per hour. Now, maximum winds in the hurricane now up to 105 miles per hour. So it's becoming a very strong hurricane. And uh, what you have is very warm air rising within the hurricane, and that exerts less weight on the surface of the water. And uh, the water then, uh, this causes a, a mound of, of water beneath the storm that moves right along with it. And when that reaches the coast, you have the storm surge. And that combined with a very strong wind on the uh, storm system, uh, on the water, you have very strong waves as much as 18 feet in some areas down that way tonight, and some severe flooding expected later on tonight along the coast. Tides anywhere from, well, 10 feet above normal down that way tonight, and rainfall expected to be anywhere from 10 to 15 inches in some areas as Alicia moves on shore. I think the eye of the storm, which is right about there, you can see the clearing in the eye. That should move ashore along about, uh, oh, between 6 and 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. So it's a dangerous storm, and we'll keep you up to date on it as we head through the evening. Now, outside in the backyard, we have a temperature of 83 degrees, and the humidity is 44%. The wind coming in from the southwest, gusty at times, 13 miles per hour, and the barometer now is uh, falling 30 inches even. The high today, hey, 84 in this backyard, and the low last night was 59. And there you have the records. A great day to go swimming. Now, let's look at Newswatch, uh, let's look at the uh, radar uh, scan as we have it, the 60 mile sweep. Nothing showing. No showers or thunderstorms in the area tonight. Let me show you now the uh, Newswatch 16 color satellite picture. There is Alicia down there moving slowly towards Texas. The storm will continue to strengthen uh, tonight because it's going to remain over the water where it gains its strength. Alicia will not affect our weather here up in Pennsylvania. So that's good news. However, some rain is on the way for us from this storm system here. Some thunderstorms now over the eastern Great Lakes. They'll be moving in and it could rain here by daybreak tomorrow. But the news is this, right through the weekend, a lot of hot air out in the Midwest, and that's going to dominate our weather pattern right through Saturday and Sunday. So keep your bathing suits handy. Now, here's our forecast for tonight. It'll be a warm night and hazy in the valleys. The breeze will stay up from the southwest. Temperatures dropping down to about 70 to Wanda. Over there in Uswick in Wayne County, 67 degrees. A pair of 68s in Nanakoke and Tamaqua, and about 69 in Loganton. And later on tonight, after midnight or towards morning, a couple of showers of thunder showers could sneak in from the west. Now tomorrow, 
hazy sun, very humid, the risk of some thunder showers popping up around the area. The west wind at 15 miles per hour, temperatures once again getting up well into the 80s. And so it's going to be another rather uncomfortable day tomorrow uh, as the hot air makes its way in from the west. Now, the shower late tonight after midnight, it will be a dry evening, 68 in town. The thunderstorm threat is with us tomorrow, 85 degrees. Sunny, a dry day Friday, 85. Look at the weekend, hot both days. I think it could reach near 90 by Sunday. So there you have it. The hurricane is down in the Gulf of Mexico, and we will update it for you tonight at 11. But it won't affect us, Nolan. All right, good news there, anyway. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Coming up, the Nittany Lions look for a strong defense again this year. Tim Carlson shows us on sports next. No problem is too small for Mike Igo and Action 16. Last night on Newswatch 16, we asked how you feel about legalizing slot machines in our area. In case you missed the results of our poll, here they are again. 75% of you who responded to our unscientific telephone survey said, yes, you do favor legalizing slot machines. Only 25% of you are against the idea. Newswatch 16 took that poll after two state lawmakers proposed allowing slot machines in the larger Pocono resorts. And it's part three of the Nittany Lions story with Tim standing by, right, Mr. Carlson? Yeah, they look good this year, too. Let's hope they can do what they did last year. Amen. Huh? While the explosive Penn State offense put a ton of points on the scoreboard last year, a gritty, hard-nosed defense was keeping opponents from doing the same. And that's the subject of tonight's Penn State preview, the defense. There's no question that last year's Penn State team was a big play team, both on offense and defense. Two of the biggest anchors on that Penn State defense are Greg Gattuso and Scott Radisek, both of whom are looking for more of the same this year. We're working real hard. You know, last year was last year, and it's not going to help us this year. You know, we have some of the same people back, and hopefully we're a year better. So that's, you know, the main thing. We're going to be working towards being a better football team. We lost a couple of starters, but we've got the people coming back that played a lot of football last year. And we're excited that we can do some big things early in the season, whereas last year it took us a couple games to come around. Wide receiver Kenny Jackson plays the game on the other side of the line of scrimmage. He sees the Nittany Lion defense as not only tough, but smart. Very intimidating, very uh, aggressive. Uh, you have guys over there that, that know what they're doing. And I think not only because they're aggressive, but they know what to do in certain situations. The Penn State defense must play well early this season in order to enable a younger offense to gain confidence in its ability. Once that is accomplished, the road to defending the national championship will be a little smoother. And tomorrow at 6, another look at the defending national champs. Well, the start of the high school football season is just a couple of weeks away. Teams in preparation right now all over Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania for their opening games. And we're getting set to visiting the teams in practice and compiling the WNEP Super 16 preseason high school football rankings. This coming Monday, we'll begin to count down those Super 16 teams from the most complete ranking system in the area. Maybe the team from your high school will be the top team on the Super 16. Who knows? Now, don't forget the Super 16 preseason. Preseason rankings begin right here Monday on WNEP TV. See you later. Okay. See more, maybe more tonight at 11. Still ahead, school day, school day, stay away. Come again some other day. We'll watch the kids enjoying their last days of freedom when we come back. If it happened, we were there. Newswatch 16 is everywhere. A plane crash in South Scranton. Within minutes, Newswatch 16 was first on the scene. Newswatch 16 crews were the first to give you live pictures and complete coverage as it happened. I, I could never imagine I'd experience anything a rock like that in my life. First, live and complete coverage. When news happens, we are there. Newswatch 16 is everywhere. Finally tonight, don't look now, but school bells will be ringing before you know it. We have two reports tonight on getting ready for class and the last days of summer. The first from Newswatch 16's Kathy Belich in Scranton. The mad dash is on again to get the kids ready to go back to the books. The preppy look seems to be the look this year. And as for prices, in this department store, the Viewmont Mall in Dixon City, clothes have jumped in price by about 6% over last year. This year, an outfit for an 8-year-old like Kenny Ayers of Clark Summit, who's headed for fourth grade, might consist of a short sleeve jersey, a pair of jeans, and a pair of sneakers. This outfit would cost an average of $36. The price 
prices might be slightly higher this year, but people are spending a lot more money at this store anyway. Well, we're again running uh, better than 30% ahead uh, in these lines of merchandise that we're talking about, and we feel that uh, the better mix of merchandise that we have and the better economy with the sp customer spending more of her dollar. You might find a few Mr. T and Zaxxon t-shirts on the racks at your favorite department store, but the salespeople here say these crazes haven't caught on nearly as strongly as last year's E.T. and Annie crazes did. I like this year's clothes better because, because they don't have all the E.T. characters on them and I like them that way. And the shoppers at this department store are not only spending more money, but they're buying more expensive clothes. Kathy Bellich, Newswatch 16, Dixon City. This is Craig Stevens in Carbon County. If you really want to know what summer vacation is all about, just look at the kids here at Lake Hauto. No worries, no cares, just lots of fun. But all that will draw to a close in a few weeks when the nemesis of all children opens again, school. But reminding them of that fact is like telling them they have the plague. What do you think about school starting up here? I don't like school and I don't want to go back. Why not? Because I hate doing the work. I went swimming and I just hang around the beach all summer. What do you think about school getting ready to start up here? Mm, I don't really like school. School's coming up here in about two or three weeks. How does that make you feel? Like I want to start summer all over. Not only do the kids dread the start of school, so do some parents. I prefer them being home. Why? Uh, less trouble. <laughs> uh, don't have to worry about getting them up in the morning. Don't have to worry about being home, you know, in time for them to come for school. And a very relaxing day. So until it's time to hit the books and the classrooms again, the kids here are just going to have as much fun as possible. Craig Stevens, Newswatch 16, Lake Hotup, Carbon County. The golden days of summer, but they always come back. That's our report for now. Till tonight at 11 on Newswatch 16 Update, Bob Reynolds will have a report on that jury, jury tampering trial in Harrisburg tonight at 11. ABC's World News Tonight is next with Peter Jennings. So for the team, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on the update.